everybody! Welcome to the aristocracy. How are you guys all doing? Okay, so we are gonna start. I'm letting you know, Twitch drama doesn't even hold a candle to 16th century drama. We're gonna talk about, okay, a rivalry between two strong, bristling, sexy young men, okay? We're not talking about Fat Henry VIII, okay? Not this guy, right? We're talking about young, sexy, very, very sexy Henry, okay? Look at him. This is young, hot, sexy Henry. He was not like your typical king just going with tons of mistresses, right? Like he was like a true Renaissance man. He would fall in love. We're gonna be talking about Henry when he's in his 20s. Guys, if you want girls, this is how you have to dress, okay? This is how you wanna dress. This is sexy, okay? He is the Renaissance Prince of Europe. He's young, he's in his 20s, he's tall, he's handsome, he's smart, and he plays music. He wrote music, he was a musician. And he's like this brand new kind of king in, in Europe. I think he became king in 1508, so he'd been ruling for a significant amount of time already. You know, he's got a sexy wife. You know, she's part of the Habsburg, you know, dynasty, which is pretty fucking cool. Yeah, he's doing he's doing well for himself, right? And he's regarded, like people would come visit and they would say, oh, like England, you might be a backwater now, but this this young, sexy, tall, redheaded king, he is going to take you. He is gonna take this England, uh, England out of this backwater to the modern age of, you know, it, it, you know, take all of you guys and, and make, make England great again. Or I guess not great again, but great for the first time. Okay. So England and France have historic, been historical enemies. They've gone through the Hundred Years' War. They've had a really, really, really tough time. But Henry VIII is a Renaissance prince. Okay. He is not, you know, your typical warmonger king. And part of being a Renaissance man is believing in peace. This is his best friend, to his bae, Cardinal Wolsey. So, uh, so he sends him, you know, to France. They start negotiating a deal and everything looks good, right? And Henry VIII is like, you know, he is, he is Le, uh, the Renaissance prince, actually bringing peace to the historical divide between England and France. But guess what happens? The king that he had been doing all these deals with and he sent his sister, he even married his sister off to the guy, right? Cause there's nothing like an alliance, like a, an alliance by marriage. But the king, he died. And then Henry's like, oh no, what do I do? I don't understand. I just made all this effort to, to do peace with France. And now this guy, he's just dead. And who's going to replace him? What if he doesn't like me? So it just puts everything into question, right? And guess who replaces him? Meet Francis the first. Okay, just look at him. He looks so French. Don't, don't even tell me he doesn't. The most French person you will ever think about. Look into my culture. I am so much superior to all of you. I am the true Renaissance prince. So, Henry, okay, who previously, you know, everyone was like, oh, he's the, the new hot young Renaissance prince that all you're talking about. Suddenly, there's a new hotter young prince. And then suddenly, Henry the it's, you know, he's getting, he's feeling really threatened. He's kind of upset. He's like, what the fuck, guys? I thought I was your Renaissance prince. But at the same time, because they're both Renaissance princes, maybe they can get along. Even though he's kind of jealous because like, like, let's be real. Okay. So Henry VIII, so obviously, you know, Francis comes to the throne and, you know, now there's all these questions about, you know, peace between England and France. Is that going to happen? Um, and Cardinal Wolsey, he loves France. Okay. He loves France. He really wants to do connections and create peace between France and uh, and England. So he starts working his magic, right? And then he thinks of this brilliant idea. What if they both met up and they did this amazing thing called the field of the cloth of the gold, okay? This idea that both kings could potentially meet up and show how glorious both of their kingdoms have become and they could party together because they're young hot guys or right? like they're bros okay they could party together do some orgies you know it'd be a fun time negotiate a peace a peace treaty but who's becoming way more powerful it is hello i am charles v that chin right one of the first Habsburgs eventually would lead to this monstrosity <laughs> 
Charles eventually basically takes over almost all of Europe. Like his grandparents, Isabella of Spain, had basically united all of Spain. He gets parts of the Holy Roman Empire and then he gets elected as the Holy Roman Emperor. So now the entire Holy Roman Empire is controlled by Charles V, right? This guy. And then he comes on board and he's like, well, I am the true Renaissance Prince. I am an emperor. Are you two emperors? No. Francis is like, oh no, I did not like this. The Spanish are freaking me out. This is bad. This is very bad. Oh, I don't know why my French accent became Israeli. I'm sorry. Of course, Cardinal Wolsey's like, this is great. This is great. This is extraordinary. This means there's nothing that is going to unite two kingdoms, like hating one kingdom. So he arranges this great meeting, this a glorious meeting between these two glorious kings, hoping that they will bond together, right? Against the evils of Charles V of, you know, of Spain and the Holy Roman Empire. They decide, okay, we need to team up. We need to team up against, you know, evil Spain and the Holy Roman Empire. Let's, let's do a meetup, right? Let's do this. So, at the time, England owned, like, almost half of France. Like, basically, like, the northern kind of part. Um, and there was a part called Calais. Well, Calais is great. Um, they decide, they literally flatten out a piece of land because they didn't want a situation where the one king was physically higher than the other because, you know, that's really bad in, I guess, the 16th century. So they meet up, they meet up and, uh, you know, and they create this entire, they basically put out this gold palace. That's like not really a palace. It was like aesthetically kind of looking like a palace. Yeah, so this is kind of like how, how the place also looked. Right, there's like gold tents everywhere and stuff. That's they actually use this really fancy kind of silk um, called that was called cloth of gold, which is and they used so much of it to decorate the place. Um, like this was costing them so much money. So Henry VIII, he's he heads he heads to Calais, and it's like this big. It's like the event of the century. It is the biggest thing. Every it's the hottest party. Everyone wants to be there. Okay, so they show up. Okay, and this is Francis. Francis is the first on, you know, he's, he's on the right. Okay. And Henry, and they're both like, you know, they're meeting up and it's this big, this, this, this big party to create this alliance, uh, against the evils, the evils of Spain, right? You know, the evils of Spain that would lead to this. They meet up, they all kind of, you know, set up their respective houses. Everything starts getting super important. Now, Francis the first, like Luca, you can recognize him on the right, right? Like, I mean, that nose is just indistinguishable. Like, and Henry, you know, he's on the left. Okay, and he's ready, he's ready to shine. Henry and Fran and Francis, they're hanging out. Like they're at like the, the dinners. They're chatting, they're chatting it up. But you know, Francis, he's kind of a dick. Okay. He's always making these like humble brags, you know, they're just chatting and Henry VIII is just, you know, he mentions one thing and every single time Francis just had to up him. Henry would be like, well, I have this, oh, you see, I have this new mistress, Mary Boleyn. Look how beautiful she is. Don't you think so? And then Francis would go, well, you see, that is Mary. I happened to have read her before. Okay. So you are writing Okay, my, my leftovers, ha <laughs> ha And then Henry's like, what? You had sex with my mistress before me? And he's like, ha ha ha. So he's, he's pissed off. He is pissed off, right? Cause Henry, like, he, you know, he was really into Mary Boleyn. He was really into that. And then now he just finds out that she'd already been sullied. You know, her innocence to be taken away by a uh, the French king. They're sitting there, they're watching a bunch of people, uh, you know, a bunch of people wrestling. Wrestling was like very popular in the 16th century, just like it is now. You know, Francis is just constantly making these dick moves. Okay, and you have to understand, Henry's a big guy. So he's kind of, you know, he's like, oh, like I just like, you know, he's, he's feeling the toxic masculinity, right? He's feeling it in his chest. He's, you know, and you know, Francis just being such a dick every single time, like every single thing he says, he's like, oh, I don't like this food because it is not made by a French chef. You see, we have a French cooking technique, okay? We like this thing called butter, okay? And Henry's like, what the fuck is butter? It's like, it is not going well. It is a very awkward, it is a very awkward dinner, right? You guys all know what kind of shit I'm talking about. They're watching the wrestling going on and Henry's like, who, who does this? French bastard think he is. 
Francis is like, oh, oh, oh. he's just, you know, busy obsessing over how French he is, right? Thomas More is busy just like, you know, Thomas More is watching on and he's like, oh, this is, this is not good. This is not good. And then Hen, you know, and then Henry has his friends, okay? And they're all like, yo, Henry, you gotta, you gotta beat him up, bro. You gotta beat him up. Henry the ghost to Francis, when well, you guess what? I challenge you to go wrestle like true men. We will take off our clothes. It starts. The fight. The big fight. Okay? It's gonna happen. It is Henry VIII wrestling. Francis I, literally some of the most powerful kings in, in Europe. Okay? They're going to fight it out. Okay? To the death. I'm kidding. Not really to the death. It's all for show. They're just gonna have a wrestling match. And they're gonna be half naked. Because that is... You know, there's nothing like two half-naked kings wrestling together to demonstrate peace in Europe, right? Like, uh, yeah, and I, I do not recommend Googling, um, you know, uh, naked wrestling. That's a, that is a bad idea. Now, Colonel Woolsey, he starts noticing. He finds out about it. He's like, no, my, my peach treaty. My peace treaty. So he's very upset, but at this point, Henry's like, no, bro, I'm, I'm at him. I'm mad at him. I'm gonna fucking get, I'm gonna get that. I'll get that French bastard, you know? You know, it's like toxic masculinity times a billion, plus money, plus kingdoms, plus 16th century. It is a recipe for disaster, all right? Henry, you think that you will beat me, but I am France, Francis the first, okay? I am the true Renaissance prince. I will get you. I will get you, okay? You think you could kill me? I will get you. I will wrestle you to the ground, okay? I will pin you. And it is not a sexual thing, okay? And Henry's like, you know, no bro, I'm going to get you, okay? I, you can't talk to me like that. They get ready to fight. Everyone's like, oh my God, this is insane, okay? They start wrestling. Now this is a real portrait from the time of the actual wrestling match. They didn't draw them half naked even though they were battled it out. It was a full wrestling match. Okay, and it was pretty intense because they're both tall, strong guys. What is happening? What happens if uh, Henry gets injured? But this is insane. No one had ever seen a wrestling match happen between two. Not only did two kings of Europe never meet up, but now they're literally wrestling because of some kind of like alpha male competition. Colonel Wolsey, he's just looking down. He's like, my peace treaty, it is done. It is gone. And of course, Charles doesn't know what's going on because he's really far away. But if he was there, he would have been like, ah, oh, I am very happy. So they're battling it out. It's intense. It's gruesome. Guys, take a guess. Take a guess who won. Well, guys, um, unfortunately for Henry, it is Francis the first. He comes in with the win. He pins Henry the down. So Henry is vulnerable. Not only is he more well-read than Henry, not only has he slept at Henry's mistresses before him, he has also literally dominated him in a wrestling match. And Henry VIII, he's mad. The worst moment in his life up to this point. Okay? It is like so fucking humiliating. Like he challenged this guy and now literally, okay, Francis proves Okay, you know, in the battle of bodies, in the battle of male bodies, that he is truly the Renaissance prince, the real alpha male. He's not happy, okay? He's, he's pissed off. They end up making a peace deal. It's not really a peace deal though. Like, they don't really commit to it. Kind of fall by the wayside. So, Henry's super sad and he's like, you know, the whole time he's probably thinking, you think I, I'm gonna sign this peace treaty, I'm gonna act like a care, but I don't, I don't really like you, bro, okay? I don't really like you, okay? You know what? Maybe you're physically stronger than me, but I'm strategically smart, smarter than you, okay? I'm intellectually, I'm the intellectual in the room. He sends Cardinal Woolsey off to start working with who? Da da da! Charles, Charles V, the original Habsburg. You know, he's got the, the glorious chin. That would lead to this, but the glorious chin. So he's, so Henry decides that he is going to ally with Spain. So his daughter, she's like, I don't know, eight or something at the time. He betrothes her to, to Charles. Alliances, alliances only mean something if there's a betrothal. And then of course, the great Italian war happens um, in which Italy and France um, battle it out against Spain. And who joins them? Henry, the original, the sad, the beat, the Renaissance prince, okay? He joins them because he's bitter. 
He remembers that fight. He will always remember that fight when he got bested. Yeah, he's spiteful. He's angry, right? He won't remember that. He will remember, and he also, he chucks Mary Boleyn, because fuck her. She's already been sullied by Francis. He chucks her, and then he takes her sister instead, okay? But she won't sleep with him, so he decides to marry her. But that's another story.